Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In great confidence then in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray for our time together in God's word. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm 
and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That has been given to us. For a while, we were still weak. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hearing of the harassed and helpless crowds around Jesus can't help but bring to mind all kinds of crowds that are gathering right now. The continued protests to open American businesses as usual, alongside the protests for the Black Lives Matter movement. Even the happy crowds that are gathering for, for parades, for birthdays, and for graduations have an air of hurt about them for all the lost opportunities of what could have been. But no matter what crowd we're in, we all feel harassed and helpless right now, don't we? Harassed by the constant onslaught of news, mostly bad and sometimes contradictory. Harassed by the restrictions caused by the coronavirus. Harassed unintentionally sometimes by the people in our households because we're together all the time with these beloved but flawed people we call family. We feel helpless to do anything about any of it, paralyzed by so many opinions about what the right thing to do is. And we have the cover of still being in the yellow face to allow us not to do anything at all. Aren't we all the helpless and harassed crew around Jesus? The most beautiful moment in this passage is when Jesus sees, really sees the crowd. He sees their hurt. He sees their need. He sees their harassment and helplessness. And he is moved with great compassion. He doesn't just say, how sad, or I feel you, or even I'm working on it. 
but he moves right to action. His first move is toward prayer, where he tells the disciples to pray for more laborers in God's kingdom mission, God's mission of love. And then he even makes some of them the answer to their own prayer by sharing his power and authority with them to cure and heal and cast out demons. By doing so, Jesus extends God, God's mission of love much farther than he himself could accomplish alone. And the proclamation that the kingdom of heaven has come near, that he tells the disciples to say, are not mere words, but rather are brought to fruition through concrete acts, namely the healing, life, and freedom that only God can give. When we are weighed down by the heaviness of all that is going on, remember that Jesus sees us and is moved with great compassion. We have hope in the one who brings that healing life and freedom, and that hope does not disappoint us. Jesus sees our need and looks on us with compassion, but also reminds us that we are not helpless. Jesus gives us that healing and that life to free us from our harassed and helpless states and invites us to move into participation with God's mission of love. We are given orders by our Lord to proclaim, heal, raise, cleanse, and free people from whatever keeps them bound. Entering into this kingdom work is not easy, as it means really seeing people, even people in the opposite crowd, seeing them as Jesus sees them and being moved with compassion. The kingdom work of healing is not easy, as it sometimes means the pain of excising wounds or re-breaking bones that didn't heal correctly the first time. The kingdom work of life means believing and proclaiming God's promises for all people. The kingdom work of freedom means taking a look in the mirror and being really honest with ourselves about how we keep others bound. Being honest with ourselves and with those that we love. Sometimes this call feels like too much to bear, but remember that it is kingdom work and it is not ultimately us who brings God's kingdom to fruition. Jesus, our Lord, does that. Let us enter into this kingdom work, even though it's hard, trusting in the one who brings the healing, life, and freedom, even through our harassed states and our sometimes bumbling attempts. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church the world, and all those who are in need. That you would guide your church in Jesus' way through our preachers and teachers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. That you would inspire us to care for your creation, 
even as we seek to defeat the coronavirus. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. That you would raise up leaders in places of conflict who will work for peace and reconciliation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. That you would empower all whose voices go unheard and help us respond to our neighbor's need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. That you would gather the fruits of this congregation, helping us discover new ways of serving. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Even as our nation mourns George Floyd, we remember before you this week the martyrs of Mother Emmanuel who were killed by a white supremacist five years ago. Clementa C. Pickney, Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lee Lance, Depayne Middleton Doctor, Twanza Sanders, Daniel Lee Simmons, Shronda Coleman Singleton, and Myra Thompson. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Be at peace. Serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God.